Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 multiplayer action. A few of you have been requesting more High Elf games recently, and uh, in preparation for my tier list, yes, I am working on it. It's actually reasonably close to being finished, should be out within the next week or so. But uh, I have been meaning to play some more High Elf, just because I have lost touch with a, a couple of their matchups. So, uh, here we are, High Elves versus Bretonia, potentially a very tough matchup for High Elves, at least in the traditional view. Uh, Bretonia tends to be really good against all three of the Elf factions. Uh, wood Elves the most, Dark Elves probably the least. Um, High Elves are kind of in the middle there, but we'll see. We've got uh, Alariel here, Star Dragon, and a Frostheart Phoenix. Front line is Spearmen mixed with some Dryads, of course under the banner of Averlorn. One Lothran Seaguard, two Archers, and a single, single Bolt Thrower. For my Bretonian opponent here, who is very uh, graciously going to camp right on the white line, uh, we've got a couple field trebuchets, let's see here, defenders, and Alberic, along with a damsel or beast, very nice, the knights of the realm, got questing knights, uh, yeah, the front line here is a whole bunch of foot squires, which is going to be a, potentially a bit painful for me. Uh, you know, dryads will trade well against pretty much all the infantry of Bretonia, except for foot squires. So, yeah, a little bit of a tough situation there, but uh, we are going to bring the flying squad back and start to do a little bit of harass here while the infantry force moves up. And I'm going to get a little bit crazy here with the Star Dragon Breaths. Uh, we've got Knights of the Realm, Questing Knights here, a number of different units. I was like, okay, if I throw the Pigeon in, uh, it's re reasonably tanky. It can kind of sit here for a minute. Maybe we can get a, get a quick tear route on one of these uh, Trebuchet crews with shock damage from the Star Dragon. So, yeah, we're going to get that going as the rest of my forces advance. It will sort of interrupt them from firing, ideally, as well. But we'll see. Here comes the Phoenix, going to drop down and go straight after the artillery crew here. Unfortunately, does not get the quick tear out like I was hoping, but here comes the Star Dragon Breath. It's going to go off. Because there's so many units blobbed in there, it actually didn't end up doing that much damage to the uh, Trebuchet crew, which is not great. Damsel also summoning now a Feral Manscore to go after a Lariel, which is a pretty good move. I'm going to burn one of the uses of the Star of Avalorn here to try and keep this Phoenix just sort of tanking some damage here while we recharge a second breath. Uh, we are managed to do, to do a little bit of damage here, but it's obviously not going to be great if I lose that Phoenix. Uh, relatively light on numbers here, so we'll see. My forces are able to advance mostly uh, without issue here, though. You can see these trebuchets are really having a hard time getting consistent shots off. They've done a little bit of damage to that one unit of Dryads, but uh, let's see. Yeah, Manscore is pretty much done for at this point. Uh, Lario has taken quite a bit of damage, but nothing she can't heal up, and the Star Dragon starting to make its presence felt as it's just about to one XP Chevron now. I'm gonna throw a nice Earthblood here. Just try and keep that Phoenix, again, sustaining it for as long as possible. It's tanked a lot of damage. And that has allowed, I think we're going to go a second breath attack here, yep. And the uh, bolt thrower is also in range to start firing at this cav blob as well, so that's going to do some pretty good damage there. Was it worth it necessarily to sacrifice the phoenix for all of that? Probably not. You can see the balance of power is going to reflect that, but we'll see. We're going to see the second manticore summon now as the uh, frostheart phoenix gets finished off here. And we're just going to send the star dragon straight for it. Uh, nope, looks like an Abort and a uh, Tempest, actually. And I believe the Star Dragon is just going to help support the frontline engagement a little bit, see if we can't bust up these uh, Foot Squires. Yep, so you can see the big boy charging in here. Holy cow, Star Dragons are so huge, man. Forget how massive they are. That will be a quick charge and quite a bit of damage. You can see all the knights charging down. They are going to be able to take down a Star Dragon if they get a nice sustained surround, especially with Albert giving anti-large to everyone nearby, assuming he does have that item. And it does look like that is the case. So yeah, pretty good stuff. The Star Dragon's going to have to pull out there. Thankfully, some spearmen will be able to screen them. Dryads did okay damage against the Foot Squires, but uh, definitely getting outclassed there. Lariel just dropping in, trying to keep these peasant arrows with uh, their, yeah, their pox arrows, rather, <laughs> tied up as long as possible. My archers, meanwhile, on the back line, able to get some good firing positions here on these foot squires. 
have taken some damage initially from my frontline engagement, and of course only 70 armor, no missile block chance. They will take good damage from those high elf bows, no doubt about it. Things are not looking great though on the balance of power. The Star Dragon's start, starting to take a lot of damage. Alariel's also uh, not looking super healthy. She is uh, quite ill, and backline being compromised, this is not great. The archer's going to start to get charged down by Bretonian Cav here. So we're just going to beat a general retreat here. You can see these spearmen and other units just kind of falling back here. I want to try and conserve HP as much as possible. Uh, the Star Dragon obviously still has quite a bit of healing cap space left, so as long as I can keep Lariel alive, we should be able to get some good healing still on the Star Dragon. Waiting for a good opportunity for a breath. Unfortunately, both units of archers here are getting chewed up pretty bad. Lothar and Seaguard also getting engaged by foot squires, which is not the best. But Earthblood here, healing Star Dragon and Alariel. Really not looking great at this point. And uh, yeah, this Bretonian Cav Death Blob, especially with Alberic here giving everyone anti large, super neat and thematic. And uh, also has so far proven to be quite powerful but uh just kind of biding our time here a little bit you can see we pulled it mostly out of range of the peasant arrows there we're just going to try and get some of these units isolated and all of these knights uh, are very powerful but here comes the last breath oh man does manage to get right in the blob there getting some good kills and at this point i have really no choice but to send the star dragon down with lariel nearby we'll get a bit of extra physical resistance I also have the one more cast of the Star of Averlorn that I can throw on these two, hopefully, uh, you know, together on the ground, ideally. But we'll see. Lothar and Seaguard and support there getting routed off. The rest of the High Elf infantry in this area getting routed off. So there is an Earthblood, and here's the engagement I want for the Star. So look at that beautiful, beautiful scene there. Star of Averlorn going off, shining down on the Star Dragon, fighting on the hill. Colorful Bretonian Cav. Taking some serious losses, and the damsel manages to get caught up in all of this and take some serious damage from the Star Dragon. That is going to bring the balance power back pretty significantly, as characters do count for quite a bit. Unfortunately, both here are finally getting compromised at this point. The few supporting spears we had pulled back there we are able to get into a position to potentially help. Um, over here, these guys doing a great job just tying these foot squires down for the time being. The archers are going to be able to start to fire in there. So maybe we can bring this back. Alariel hunting the damsel. We've got more foot squires here. Again, just gonna take little planks here from these Lothar and Seaguard as we tie down with the Dryads. It's gonna be a bit of a tough one to come back in the end, but the Star Dragon drops down here and Albrick gets a little bit singled out and takes a ton of damage from a few massive attacks. Star Dragons have huge weapon strength. And all of a sudden, Albrick shatters. He actually just gets nommed by the dragon. Oh man. Poor Alberic, and that is going to bring the balance of power back dead even. All of a sudden, this Bretonian Cav Force without Alberic isn't nearly as scary to the Star Dragon. And at this point, all of a sudden, there's really nothing that can take him down. You see these Foot Squires uh, starting to take some damage. I mean, just through sheer attrition, they're really not going to do great here. Spearman, um, one of them has lost its martial prowess. The other one, 50 melee defense, though, in this late game will count for quite a bit. And the archer is able to just kind of, again, provide a little bit of HP damage here and there. But yeah, at this point it's mostly a cleanup operation. Unfortunately for the Bretonians, they just about had army losses ticked over. And if they had been able to do a little bit more damage to the Star Dragon, maybe, or potentially finished off Alariel. But that's the nice thing about Alariel and a big big HP monster like the Star Dragon together. is It's quite forgiving, you know, even if you mess up pretty severely, as long as... You don't get either of them routed off the field. You still can come back, even from a very desperate situation like that. Star Dragon's been able to get up to rank 4, 91 kills. Uh, just tons and tons of heavy lifting done. At this point, you can see the uh, Foot Squires are actually going to lose out the engagement against the Spearmen here with the support of the Elven Bows. The Bolt Thrower gets into position on the on the hill here to start counterfiring the Trebuchet. And yeah, the Bolt Thrower crew thankfully has one of the higher leadership values of any uh, artillery crew, so they actually will very likely come back and be able to get back in the fight like this. But at this point, we're mostly going to fast forward as the uh, fight's pretty much decided here. Last few Foot Squires getting chased off. And the Flyers moving into a position to finish things 
Of course, the big star scary star dragon will be a lot, even for the Beast Slayers of Bastogne, who have been valiantly defending the trebuchets here, managed to keep at least one of them online. But uh, yeah, those peasant archers are very quickly going to want to rout. Even the regular foot squires here aren't going to be the best. Earth blood. And you can see the balance power very dramatically tipping there as a lot of these units get terrified away. Unfortunately, don't have a lot of supporting elements in range at the moment, but uh, the, rest of these, the rest of these units keeping uh, the Bretonians from being able to support as well. And the Star Dragon taking things home here as we move into the final stages. So very well played to my opponent. Um, a little bit of an interesting tactic. I was going to say something else, but uh, yeah, to go up against the white line like that, ultimately it didn't end up working out for him as it very, very rarely ever does. Uh, for players who do that, but still, you can see here, just pulling back, getting ready for another timing push, raining in a few arrows, I think maybe, I uh, yeah, I have used all three breaths already, but ideally if we can get these Beast Slayers on a side or rear charge, it's going to do a lot more damage. So just a few more cinematic shots, you can see the uh, disused trebuchets here, and oh man, looks like the Star Dragon actually going in the back line after these peasants, Trying to just uh, hit army losses here, I guess. But yeah, the Beast Slayers will charge in. Not a whole lot left that can oppose, but... Yeah, I guess we'll just fast forward to the end as the rest of these Bretonian units realize how futile their cause is. And that will be game. So, once again, well played to my opponent. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching that one. Quite a back and forth battle, and I thought I had just about lost that one. But again, very forgiving with Lariel and healing. As I have stated before, Bretonia is sometimes not amazing um, at fighting big, heavily armored single entities. It is a bit risky to take them in the air against Bretonia, because obviously Bretonian has a Bretonia has a very powerful air force. But I figured, you know, with the debuffs from the Frostheart Phoenix, with uh, Tempest as well, you know, and the healing that the Star Dragon and the Phoenix could probably win out against some units in the air. Maybe with some supporting ground fire. I don't know. Like double hip griff knights with Luin's pretty scary. Don't know that we'd be able to survive that, but ultimately ended up working out well this time for Bretonia. I think just cutting these field trebuchets and going with more traditional cavalry, like honestly just cut them one for one for uh, more knights errant and you'd be just fine. Um, you might want a little bit more elite killing power as well, just like maybe upgrade one of these units to the Regiment of Renown questing knights or maybe opt for some grail knights instead. Just something a little bit more elite that can really put the hurt on the Star Dragon if it chooses to come down to the ground. But uh, I really like the use of Albrecht there to buff up those other cav units, especially the Questing Knights who wouldn't normally have anti-large, of course. So, very nice. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button so every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.